Hi, this is Ajit from Ajit Dev Photography. Thank you for joining me today. Seeing as we're all in the situation where we are stuck at home, um, I decided on what kind of video I could do. I thought I'd take this opportunity to maybe do a video based on what lenses I'm shooting with as of 2020. <laughs> In one of my very first videos, I spoke about which Canon compatible flashes I was using with my Sony body, which at the time was the Sony a7R2. And that was back in 2016. So I was still shooting on my Canon lenses, including the 70 to 300 L lens and the 100 millimeter macro lens as well. But as I made the commitment to switch over to the Sony E-mount, I've slowly migrated all of my lenses over. Without further ado, here are the six Sony lenses that I'm shooting with as of 2020. So number one is the Sony 24-70 f2.8 G Master lens. Now this was actually bought to pair with my Sony a7R2, which I still own. This has to be my most used lens of all and uh, the most versatile as well. I like how you can just grab it in a pinch when you only need to think about one lens. You're not really sure what you might be shooting, which one to grab for, this would be it. With this lens, I can switch from shooting landscapes to astroscapes, portraits, and even outdoor architecture. And back when I used to shoot weddings, uh, this used to be my most used lens as well. Uh, its pros is the fact that it is sharp for a zoom lens and it is versatile. The cons are the fact that it is really heavy. Um, I think it weighs just over a kilo with um, the lens hood attached and maybe a UV filter and very expensive as well. But there are other alternatives for Sony E-mount right now, including Sigma and Tamron's one, which is the 28 to 70. Um, I've heard really good things about that lens. Also, as this is my most used lens, I'm not really sure why, but the rubber zoom ring here is actually started to bulge just here. So maybe I need to get that replaced. You can see the bulge just there. So that's the only other quibble I've got with this lens. Okay, number two is the Sony 85mm f1.4 G Master lens. This is my most widest aperture lens at f1.4. It's got 11 rounded aperture blades, which produces really nice defocused areas or bokeh, which is perfect for portraits. Obviously it has the de-clickable aperture ring button there. Uh, which is perfect for video. It's not my most used lens, but I do hope to increase that now with some more video usage. So pros, as mentioned, it is a f1.4, so it's my most widest aperture lens that I own, and its optical quality is really amazing. It's very, very sharp. Its cons, similar to the 24 to 70, because it's a G Master lens, it's very heavy and also very, very expensive. Alternative to this would be the Sony 85mm f1.8. Now that I've heard amazing things about and it's roughly just over one third of the price of this lens. So if I hadn't already purchased this one, I most definitely would have gone for the f1.8 and saved myself around about 900 pounds. Okay, number three is the Sony 90mm f2.8 macro lens. So obviously being a macro lens, it's great for close-up shots of flowers, uh, insects, if that's your kind of thing. I mainly used to use it to take pictures of wedding rings, um, close-ups of the wedding rings for a couple. But other than that, for my um, client work, I didn't really used to use this a lot at all. Now the advantage of having a lens like this is if you don't already own a lens like the 85mm then you can also double it up as a portrait lens and also according to DxO Mark, um, which I do reference sometimes, it's um, one of Sony's most sharpest lenses so it can actually work as a portrait lens as well. What I do like about this lens is it is reasonably priced compared to its competitors, um, it has a good weight to it, it has a good balance to it when you pair it up with an A7 Mark III, for example. And um, like I said before, it is actually a very, very sharp lens. Uh, its con would be mainly the fact that it has limited uh, use cases if you already 
own an 85 millimeter, for example. I owned the 85 millimeter first prior to this, and I've only ever used it to shoot wedding rings and then for close-ups of uh, flowers. So you might not get much use out of this personally. Now there is an alternative to um, buying a macro lens, which is to get yourself a set of extension tubes. Now I actually own a couple from um, I think a brand called Newer, uh, which is from Amazon. It didn't cost me a lot and I actually use it in conjunction with the macro lens now that I have it. But you could purchase this instead of a macro lens and still get a similar effect with the lens you already own. Okay, so lens number four is the Sony 70-200 to f2.8 G Master lens. Okay, let me actually get this hood off. That's better. F 2.8 G Master lens. Okay, so I actually bought this to replace my Tamron 70 to 200 G1 lens, which was for my Canon DSLR. This is a superb telephoto lens. I would use this as my secondary lens after my 24 to 70 when I was shooting weddings. I know they say that most wedding photographers either fall into the 35 85 category or the 24 and 70 and 70 to 200 category and I was definitely in the latter. I mean the lens itself is not exactly discreet but um, if you were there as a wedding photographer then I would find that this lens would be great for capturing discreet moments. I also recently discovered that this is a great lens for portraits and even pet portraits. You can pair it with a camera like the a7 Mark III and use its animal eye autofocus. So you can nail that focus like I did here. I also noticed that it does produce some lovely color and compression when you're shooting this lens straight out of the camera. The compression is a lot different to when you're using an 85 millimeter lens. Now I know that is a dedicated portrait lens, but if you do have a 70 to 200 and a 2.8, then do try out for, for portraits as well because compression that you get from it especially have something way off in the background is is actually really really good you just get more of that 3d pop effect when you're using it the pros of this lens is that it's built like a tank which means it is weather sealed its image quality is fantastic it's a lot better than my Tamron 70 to 200 and this too also does have an internal zoom ring and then the cons of this lens, um, like I mentioned in the Pro, it's built like a tank, uh, which means it is absolutely heavy. Um, I've got it attached here to my Arca Swiss plate, which I can then just put it straight on the tripod if I need to. But yeah, um, you definitely pay for the quality in terms of the weight as well, so bear that in mind. And of course, like any other Sony G Master lens, it is very, very expensive. This is actually my most expensive lens that I currently own. Uh, alternative to this lens would be to maybe go for the F4 version. It's not a G Master lens, but it's so many quality, so it probably will be very close to the quality of this. And it's obviously gonna be lighter being an F4. Now lens number five is my Tamron 17 to 28 F2.8 ultra wide lens. Now I actually pre-ordered this lens last year having already looked at my options at the time, which included the Tamron 15 to 30, which is a, a DSLR lens, the Laowa 15 millimeter 0D lens, which is also an exceptional lens. And of course the primary one, the Sony 16 to 35 millimeter G Master lens. And to be honest, it was the Sony 16 to 35 that I really was hoping to get. But that price has just stayed up so high for so long, it just became impossible for me to try and get that lens. Yes, I have bought an expensive 24 to 70 and indeed the 70 to 200, but I would have found those use cases to be more important than the ultra wide. But this has had blisteringly amazing reviews all around, and its performance that I've seen has been just like that. I use it for panoramas, uh, for astro, for those who are looking for an ultra wide lens for astro scapes. This is actually a good candidate. And for architecture as well, my widest previously was the 24 to 70 and at 24 millimeters, it just wasn't working for me. So now I've got the 17 millimeters and I can get a much wider field of view. I also now use my leaf filters on this lens with an adapter so I can still use my big stopper and the little stopper filters. 
And another great thing about this lens is that I've tried it on the DJI Ronin SC and it just balances wonderfully, especially with an A7 Mark III or my A7R Mark II. So the pros of this lens is it's very small, it's light, it's affordable, um, it's got excellent picture quality, and I love the fact that the zoom ring is actually internal, so it doesn't extend out either. Great for when you're balancing it on your gimbal. And the only con I could think of is the fact that it's not fully weather sealed like the G Master lens. But other than that, it's, it's actually a really great lens. Okay, so the last lens I wanna talk about is actually the one I'm shooting on, which, let me swap it over. Okay, so lens number six is the Sony 35 millimeter F1.8. Now look at that just, now look at the size of this thing. This is just tiny. This is absolutely adorable. Uh, so this is my newest lens that I've purchased. Um, again, I pre-ordered this one because I really wanted a, a small, light and affordable 35mm lens. Now it might be tiny, but it does perform. Now I used to have a Sigma 35mm f1.4 art lens for my DSLR. Now I sold that and I actually missed having that focal length. It was a very sharp lens and it kind of enabled me to take shots that I wouldn't necessarily think of using. Now I actually bought this lens without any specific intent. Um, it's not like I desperately needed a 35 millimeter lens for a particular type of shot or a particular category. It was just, I missed having it. Just like the Tamron 17 to 28, this is an amazing lens to use on a light gimbal such as the Ronin SC. Now what I have found after purchasing this lens is although I didn't buy it for any particular reason if I wasn't going to be reaching out for the 24 to 70 then this is the lens that I would reach out for to use as a walk around lens. So you can see here in some of these shots that I use this on a typical day out and use just this focal length this is a great lens to to have so the pros about this lens is it is sharp and very very light i mean this is 250 or 60 grams in weight light it's a capable f 1.8 and uh, i think the pricing is just about right and if i compared this to my sigma art lens it was at least twice the size so I'm much happier having this lens than the Sigma. Now the only con I can think of for this lens is balancing it on a gimbal can be tricky, especially when you think about your camera body is a lot heavier than this lens. So it's either gonna be very back heavy or um, it might be bottom heavy as well. So balancing this lens on a gimbal, you have to be very careful with it. And the alternative to a lens like this would be the aforementioned uh, Sigma. Uh, f1.4 art lens and also Sony do a 35mm f2.8 lens which is I think like a pancake type lens but um, this lens is small enough as it is I don't think you need to go any smaller. Okay so those are the six lenses I'm shooting with right now. As I said this is just a fun little video more of a an update to say what I'm shooting with as of this time maybe you guys have something that you prefer to shoot with uh, rather than the lenses I've got, or you have some recommendations or comments, then obviously please leave them down below. So that's it for you guys today. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions or comments or indeed recommendations, then as I mentioned before, please leave them down below. If you found this video useful or helpful in any way, then I'd appreciate a thumbs up and I'll see you all in the next video.